called HP Gary Responder. And uh, they have a tool called Flypaper that's pretty useful as well that I think you could download for free. Uh, Flypaper lets you take a st kind of stop a VM and take a memory snapshot so that you can analyze it. And there's so many tools out there that I find new ones all the time. Uh, one that's not in here that's really cool is uh, uh, McAfee's File Insight, which is a freely available tool that lets you kind of kind of look at something from a hex view for Adobe. It's certainly useful. You can look at an Adobe document, highlight a flat encoded stream, and then just decode it with one click. All right, so let's uh, wrap this up. So the conclusion here, uh, implementing a cyber intelligence capability, uh, not very uh, difficult to do. You could certainly do it if you uh, want to. Uh, one of the things you can do is you can pull talent from other areas. So you probably already have a lot of people that can staff a cyber intelligence team in your organization. You can go out and find them. You might very well be the people that are looking to start a cyber intelligence team and are the technical talent. So this is the type of thing that you can say, hey, I can do you know, this on top of my other job responsibilities. I can also do this. Um, more people, uh, you might need to hire some more, uh, invest in some talent to solve some of these problems. And the other thing is don't expect immediate results. If you stand up a cyber intelligence team, they're not going to be like hitting the ground running. They're going to have to build up. They're going to have to understand what the risk is, what the threats are. It can take several months for them to actually produce something that is actionable. Uh, but certainly when they start doing that, it's, it's pretty, pretty impressive to see. As far as case coordination, communication is key, making sure that the people on the team are communicating, but also communicating with management and then communicating all of these things up the chain because at the top of the food chain, if the C-level people don't know what the threats are, don't know what's going on, they're going to have a hard time doing anything about it. Um, so the technical methodology here. So the tech team is going to monitor, uh, for monitor the intelligence feeds that are coming in or the intelligence that's being produced by the intelligence cell for the threat. Then they're going to go out, they're going to identify an incident. They're going to actually, rather than like the CERT team or the SOC team, which is like waiting for bad stuff to be reported to them, this team is going to go out and start hunting for bad stuff that's going on. Uh, packet analysis. They're going to analyze all of the packets from that incident. They're going to try and understand, you know, was this some sort of malicious iframe redirect? Was this um, something that, you know, w w was there a command and control from a malware that we can analyze? They'll do disk analysis, so once they've identified that a system's been compromised or something shady is going on, they'll pull the hard drive and do the analysis of that disk. And then they'll do reverse code engineering. So they'll actually analyze the code and figure out what is this threat and how can we prevent you know, it coming back. And then they'll report all of their findings to the intelligence team as well. Now the intelligence team's methodology is going to be to monitor threat sources, monitor intelligence feeds, monitor you know, whatever it is that you have uh, reporting in. Uh, they're going to identify new threat sources by staying on top of emerging threats and topics, monitoring mailing lists and things of that, that nature. And they're going to conduct regular reporting. So they're going to keep everybody in the organization aware of you know, threats. And obviously it doesn't need to get very technical, but certainly things like, you know, hey, there's been a spear phishing or a phishing campaign uh, by Zeus actors and they're saying they're from the IRS and that your tax return is done. Putting information like that into the hands of the users not only will protect them at work, in the network, and in the environment, but also at home. So uh, people do take work home and work on it at home. So this is something that's also becoming uh, an area to pay attention to is what are people taking home? How are they remotely accessing the network? And what, are, what, what files do they have at home? So in conclusion, cyber intelligence is becoming a major differentiator between successful organizations and how they're doing business. As, t as different organizations stand up cyber intelligence capabilities, they're becoming a lot more situationally aware of what, what's going on around them on the internet and how it's actually targeting them and how it affects them. Uh, insider threats, targeted cyber threats are expanding. They're not going away anytime soon. Uh, ask Google. Ask anybody that's recently been popped. I think that there's a talk today on, uh, or was it yesterday, on involuntarily being a test case for, uh, for data loss prevention. Reliance on information technology is increasing and the impact of cyber incidents is increasing. The more people use this technology, the more comfortable they are with it, 
the more they trust it and the, the less they're kind of, well, something weird was going on. So you certainly need to, um, to keep that in mind when, when building one of these teams out and, and implementing it. And the rapid expansion of technology is definitely increasing the attack surface area. You know, a couple of years ago, you were only worried about, you know, firewalls and threats from outside of the network. You weren't worried about malicious emails as much, you know, other than the occasional I love you virus or Melissa virus. Uh, as people start taking devices, mobile devices and iPads and things like that off the network, I mean, you're losing that boundary. You no longer have that, that, that control that anything from this point back is my concern, anything from this point forward is the internet. You know, people are moving your enterprise boundary all over the world. So building a cyber intelligence team can limit the threat impact and effectiveness with limited cost. You can put minimal investment into this and um, certainly show some impact. So I guess the last thing here is if you want to try this at home, um, look within your organization for some talent that, that might be in there that can do this type of thing. And build a small cyber intelligence capability within an existing cyber team. So if you have a SOC, take two people and say, hey, you're going to be the cyber intelligence team and here's what I want you to do. And maybe come up with a couple of use cases that you can have them demonstrate and prove that this is an effective tool. Measure the organizational impact every couple of months and see how that's, that's impacting the bottom line and demonstrate the capability is helpful and try and get some funding for it. So with that, um, I will open it up to Q&A. Uh, here's my email if anybody wants to contact me and uh, Twitter if anybody wants to see what parties I'm going to. Thank you. The tools that we use as far as for conducting analysis? Right, there's a couple of programs in place for uh, evaluating tools, things like the uh, NSA's Common Criteria, which uh, later became NIAP, the National Information Assurance Partnership. I don't know what the P stands for. Um, but certainly, having gone through one of those vetting processes does impact what tools we use in the, in the government space. Um, do I personally uh, know, and also, I mean, you can say that Microsoft products are built by an American company, but who's doing the coding? And, you know, that's kind of where is Microsoft, you know, or any company for that matter, who's doing the coding and, and what control do they have over the code base? Anything else? No? And you didn't even have to come up and high five me. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. And if anybody wants to come up, I'll be around for a couple minutes.